G'day, I'm Paul. Now, there are a list of cars that we don't get in Australia that I desperately want, and this is one of them. It is called the Kia Telluride. This shares a platform with the Hyundai Palisade, which we do get in Australia, but the Telluride is built here in the States and it is only built in left-hand drive. And this is an off-road version of it called the X-Pro. So I thought, let's check it out. Kia has an aggressive off-road dual cab ute coming. So let's see what they actually do have in store when it comes to off-roading in the passenger car space. Now this is priced at around $53,000 here in the States, but if that is too expensive, the entire range kicks off at around 36 grand. This competes with things like the Hyundai Palisade, the Mazda CX-90, Nissan Pathfinder. It's that type of thing powered by a petrol V6 engine. Now today we're gonna to do a review of this. We're gonna do just a little bit of light off-roading as well, just to see how good it is, especially with those tires on it. If you do wanna skip ahead to other parts of this, Review, you can use the time codes that are on the screen or if you're on YouTube you can scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we review cars in America. Now let's check colors you've got a stack of them to choose from your optional colors are around $500. I love this one it's kind of like a, a Nardo gray which seems to be in style at the moment with um, with a lot of brands including uh, on the Lexus GX that we reviewed recently. I think it's a, it's a pretty fetching color. Got it on my Raptor as well. And down the bottom here, you've got a big grill. It's interesting, a lot of that grill is actually closed off. So you can see it's really there just for sort of design purposes as opposed to cooling. Uh, naturally aspirated petrol V6. The interesting thing is this is available here with an all wheel drive, which is what this is. Whereas in Australia, Palisade is only paired with front wheel drive when you have the V6 engine. You have to get the diesel for all wheel drive. A new Kia logo on the front there, camera there for the 360 camera. Bit of piano black down there as well, radar sensor there, and then piano black skirting there too. You've got full LED headlights with these orange running lights, which look really cool. When you are driving along and this vehicle's following you, you can uh, just see those sort of lighting up. It actually looks really nice. Come around to the side with me. I want to show you these tyres. Look at this big old set of all-terrains sitting on 18-inch alloy wheels. It's got a matte black finish. Looks absolutely fantastic. Now, the all-terrains are an interesting choice because this is obviously a family SUV, but when you do go down the path of the X-Pro, this is delivering a sort of off-road uh, specification. So it has slightly higher ground clearance at a little over 200 millimetres. In addition to that, you have center diff lock. It also has self-leveling rear springs as well when you are towing. A little bit of wheel arch cladding there as well, so everyone knows you go off-road. Uh, Body-colored wing mirrors with an indicator built into their camera there as well. Roof rails, you've got privacy glass. It's a big vehicle too. Like it's, uh, it's easy to underestimate the size of this thing. Same story with Palisade, but I do like how this has a completely different design to the Palisade. Uh, come around to the back with me, I'll show you these taillights. Now around the back here, you've got yourself a set of LED taillights. Now have a look at this. That design sort of is a, is a teardrop down the side there. You've got additional lights and reflectors down the bottom here as well. X-Pro badge just there. A set of dual exhaust pipes there as well, with a bit more of that piano black finish. Telluride individual lettering just there as well, and then that uh, shaved off looking Kia logo. It also has a digital rear view camera as well, shark fin aerial up the top. So let me know what you reckon about the design of the Telluride. Do you wanna see this in Australia? I reckon this would actually do really nicely. So let me know in the comments section below. So this is what the inside of the Telluride looks like. Uh, it's, it's fascinating because they have a new version of the key. So this is the same key that you'll find in the new EV9 with the little light up thing there, uh, unlock, boot and then panic uh, then you've got a remote start function as well it's a proximity sensing key too so you can leave that in your pocket and then you've got a push button start just there um, in terms of the appearance though it actually does feel quite nice and premium you've got this sort of wood grain trim that runs along the dashboard there there's a lot of piano black around here which i'm not a huge fan of but um, outside of that it actually appears nice this is a generation back from where we are today. So uh, Sorento, if you can picture that, EV9, they have the newest version of this infotainment system. This is the last generation of it. So this doesn't have features like wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You have to plug a cable in for those, whereas the latest version of this infotainment system has solved that and added uh, all of those functions. But it does still appear quite nicely. It's all integrated into that single display there. Now, in terms of touch points and stuff, it is all uh, quite nice and soft and, you know, 
quite comfortable as well. But I did notice uh, stuff like this is just a little bit loose, uh, and then this is a little bit loose as well. So this is built here in the States, uh, as opposed to Korea, which is where we get the Palisade from. That's actually part of the reason we can't get it in Australia as well. They build Palisade for us out of Korea, and it means that they can do right-hand drive, whereas here in the US factory, they can only do left-hand drive for Telluride, which is part of the reason we can't get it in Australia. Um, so a brushed aluminium switch gear down the bottom here, and then the traditional buttons over here. It doesn't have that switchable menu like you find in Sportage and some of the newer Kia models. Now, in terms of the infotainment system, this has all of the, the features we've come to like from other Kia models. So two 12.3 inch displays. This one here is a color touchscreen. Now this has uh, features that we've uh, grown to like, like uh, passenger talk. So when I talk up the front here, it uses a microphone to project audio to the back of the vehicle. So this is passenger talk on, and this is passenger talk off. Uh, voice memos, in case you come up with any great ideas while you're on the, on the road. Uh, quiet mode, so you can have audio just up the front while the kids have some rest in the back. This one's interesting. We don't get this in Australia, HD radio data data if you're over here. Um, traffic, uh, you also have Doppler radar and fuel prices as well. So pretty cool setup and uh, something we haven't seen before, which uh, is quite fascinating. Um, and then in addition to that, you have Care Connect services, which we've started now getting uh, in Australia. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay and Android Auto look like. So there's Apple CarPlay. Look at that, that is fantastic. So wired system, but very sharp and easy to use. And this is what Android Auto looks like. Uh, so yeah, full screen and then also nice and quick as well. Uh, so that rounds out the, the functions over here. When it comes to comfort features, you've got USB-A and USB-C connectivity. You've got a 12 volts outlet, wireless phone charging. You've also got dual zone automatic climate control for the front, heated steering wheel, heated and cooled seats as well. So this is the top spec version of the X Pro. It's called the SX Prestige over here. So that means you're also getting uh, electric seat adjustment too. And also this digital rear view mirror as well. Also quite like this suede uh, Alcantara style headlining as well it's kind of nice and nice and premium and the seats hug you in nicely as well with x pro branding up the top so yeah it is a great place to be seated and uh, i'm a big fan of what you see here now on the safety front you have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection you've got the uh, digital mirror there you've got lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant radar cruise control you get a 360 camera with front and rear parking sensors show you what that looks like there you go, quality of that's okay. It's sort of um, not amazing, but uh, not terrible either. I really don't know in this day and age with the high quality cameras that are available, why manufacturers don't just jump at the opportunity to fit like a super high resolution camera. But anyway, it is what it is. Now, second row, have a look at this. This is living the life. So this is a six seat configuration, which means you've got uh, two captain's chairs here instead of a bench seat. Uh, in terms of room, fantastic knee room. Toe room is great. Headroom is excellent too. I mean, they've really uh, thought about the, the market here and made sure there is stacks of room inside the cabin. So uh, map pockets in the back of the seats, hooks there as well for your shopping. Another two USB-C ports. You got a 12 volts outlet and then a power outlet down there as well, 100 watts. So not exactly the most, uh, you know, capacious uh, power supply, but it'll do the job. Two cup holders just here. You've got little armrests that swing down as well. You can set the height on those. You have heated and cooled seats. You've got privacy blinds just here as well, which is cool. These seats also slide, so you can go forwards and backwards if you do need to give yourself more room in the third row, plus your own climate control settings with air vents up the top here. So really fantastic place to be seated and quite an impressive setup. Let's jump into the third row. I'm keen to see how much room there is uh, in the third row and behind the third row as well. Now, third row, uh, let me show you how it all works. So you can just push this button, so that slides all that forward, or you can just go through the center. So I'm just gonna dart through the center here, elegantly, and let's, how much, let's have a look at how much leg room there is. Okay, so it's not too bad, and I'll tell you why. So knee room isn't very good. I'm sort of cramped up against that. Headroom is not great either, but given you don't have anything there in the center, you could, in theory, stretch your leg out like that if you're an adult to give yourself a bit more space and, and to relax. Uh, because once you are back here, you've got USB-C connectivity on the sides, 
cup holders there as well and your own air vents too so it's not a bad place to be seated once you're in but um I don't think you'd want to be here for a long distance trip and I also don't think this would work if this was just a bench seat here in the second row and you couldn't stretch your legs out but um let's have a look behind the third row I'm keen to see how much room there actually is back there yeah let's talk cargo space I wanted to see how much room there is here behind the third row. So you have around 240 litres, which actually isn't that bad when you consider that a lot of these three row SUVs just don't have any space here at all. Then beneath the, uh, the actual cargo floor, you have some additional storage as well. So room there for the cargo blind, plus a couple of other bits and pieces, your spare tyre is under the vehicle there. Now, if you do want to expand the space, you can drop your third row out of the way. So say goodbye to that. Once you've done that, it expands the space to over 1,300 litres. Then if you do want even more space, you can drop the second row as well by pushing the buttons over here. And that expands the space to over 2,400 litres. So it is a big old space. It's like a sort of caravan style thing. Okay, so we just hit the road in the Telluride. Gotta tell you, this all feels pretty familiar to Palisade. Uh, it's really interesting. They sort of share the same underpinnings, but different factories and uh, I think different engineering teams as well, because this one is strictly built for the US market. That is where uh, you know, they've really intended this to go on sale. And I think that's also what's driven this X-Pro model. Even though it's not hardcore off-road, and we'll do just a bit of very light off-roading later on so I can show you how it works, it's enough to get your places. And not everyone wants to be driving one of those big ladder frame SUVs. This is a, a monocoque chassis, which means that it has more car-like handling and driving characteristics as opposed to something like a, a, a Ford Everest, which shares a platform with the Ranger and is more sort of ute feel behind the wheel, if you get what I mean. So um, now powering this 3.8 litre, naturally aspirated six cylinder petrol engine, makes 217 kilowatts of power and 355 Newton meters of torque. So it's not a huge amount, and because it is naturally aspirated, it means that uh, it sort of takes a little bit of time to get up and move. Down low in the rev range, you don't really have a whole lot of poke. So what does that mean behind the wheel? Well, if we give it a stab now, it makes a lot of noise, but it reaches uh, its peak torque later in the rev band. So it really means you've got to stay in it to get moving. Thankfully, it's a good sounding engine. So um, when you're sort of powering along and you're getting up and it actually sounds all right. Also has stop start as well. So you can see the little A icon there. I'll show you how that works when you come to a complete stop. It will switch the engine off. Let's see how smooth that is. Yeah, nice. So it's, uh, it's not one of those advanced systems like a 48 volt uh, mild hybrid, which can switch off while the car's still moving. This has to come to a complete stop, but it's a feature like that that's going to end up saving you a bit of fuel. Now, the big difference here between Palisade and Telluride when it comes to this V6 petrol engine is that this is available in all-wheel drive, and you can see the uh, torque distribution there on the screen. It's sort of constantly getting shuffled around depending on steering input, throttle loads. It is predominantly a front-wheel drive, but it can send torque to the rear as required. In Australia, uh, the Palisade is only available as a front-wheel drive paired with the V6 petrol engine, so you will have a little bit of a compromise there. What about your fuel economy? So we're currently averaging 15.1 miles per gallon, uh, but the official figure is a little over 11 litres per 100k. So this one of those vehicles that is going to be a little bit thirsty especially if you're driving it in and around town naturally aspirated petrol v6 needs to be revved out a lot that's going to mean a decent amount of fuel use hopefully down the track they will actually develop a hybrid that works with this platform because that would be a very welcome addition now let's talk drive mode so you have comfort sport and smart along with eco and snow you also have a center diff lock now it is uh, i guess a bit of an artificial diff lock it doesn't actually have a center differential so to speak it actually just has a clutch pack that closes so you're getting that equal torque split between the front and the rear axle when that is active so it gives you a bit more confidence when you're doing uh, off-road driving because you're able to get better uh, traction delivery between the front and rear axle it's not having to wait for uh, loss of traction on an axle before it actually sends torque there so uh, we'll see how well that works when we climb the little hill I've found for us now what does it all feel like if you slot it into sport mode uh, for a little fang around here we are on all terrain so that is probably going to change the equation a little bit in terms of how this feels but you can see how it goes anyway uh, the Palisade was always a, a fairly sort of competent handling vehicle as well, so it wasn't sort of 
over the top and it wasn't um, wasn't exactly the world's best either but this kind of feels the same it's it's big it's a seven seater but when you do get up it you do get that confidence of it being planted on the road and also even with these um, all-terrain tires it still actually has a decent amount of traction I was expecting them to fall away pretty quickly but it all feels sort of pretty nice and confidence inspiring behind the wheel with decent steering feel as well which is a little surprising to me let's talk comfort so look the, the ride is actually not too bad and that is partly thanks to those all-terrain tires they're, they're quite a high profile tire and it means that you are getting a pretty sort of comfortable cushy ride as you drive along we tend to find that a lot with uh, north american vehicles that they are tuned for comfort the roads here are sort of long distance, higher speed, and you just want to be nice and comfy behind the wheel without being thrown around constantly or feeling uneasy. So this really does tick all of those boxes. Now, what about road noise? Um, look, I haven't driven a Telluride without these all-terrains, but I do notice on course chip roads, you do get a bit of road noise in the cabin. That is one of the downsides of an all-terrain tire. It will always sort of spit out a bit more road noise inside the cabin because it is a chunkier profile tire compared to a, a standard highway terrain. Visibility is great as well. So I can see clearly down the front of the car there. Visibility out the back's good. I've got my digital mirror there as well. If I want to get just a little bit more creative, wing mirrors are big enough as well with blind spot monitor built into those. I do love when you put the indicator on, you're getting your blind spot camera there as well. This is one of the best features that Hyundai and Kia do. And it's really cool to see that that is, um, that is fitted here to the X-Pro SX Prestige. Now, if you are doing any towing, you actually have a tow mode. So 2,500 kilos or thereabouts of brake towing capacity. And it's got helper springs on the rear that will actually lift it up a little bit if you are towing a load. It just gives you that extra balance that you need to actually get up and move uh, and tow with confidence. Because when you do stick a lot of weight on vehicles like this, especially if you do have passengers in the cabin, it tends to squat quite a lot at the rear. These, um, these springs will actually help push that up a bit and make sure that the load or that the vehicle rather sits a whole lot more level when you're driving. Now let's talk performance numbers. So they reckon zero to 100 happens in under eight seconds. So let's see what that feels like. We'll come to a stop here, pop it in sport mode and see how we go. It not feel too bad, it's nice, and, uh, nice and punchy there. It's 100 k's an hour, so let's have a little sticky beak. Okay, so 0 to 100, 8.27 seconds. So a little over the claim number there, but um, you know, it's okay for a vehicle this size, but do keep in mind if you do load it up, it is going to become much lower as it goes. Now let's do just a little bit of light off-roading. Now, when I say light off-roading, this is very light off-roading, but the person that's buying this isn't going to go rock hopping. It's not a vehicle designed for that. This is more designed for a family that wants to go camping. I've been in that situation before with my daughter where we just want to go somewhere. There's a little creek down here and I thought, let's just try this little trail here and just see how it goes. And I'll demonstrate just a couple of the features we got here. So first up, we're going to be going downhill into there. So I'm going to use the hill descent control just by pushing that. And we'll just line ourselves up in the ruts here. And then I'll let the, the vehicle do all the braking for us. So it's been quite wet here recently, so it is sort of uh, nicely chopped up. So here we go, we're on our descent. I'll just let go of the brake and let it do all the work. So there we go, I can feel that um, braking those wheels as we come down. So that's doing it all for us. I'll turn that parking sensor off. Yeah, nice. So that's just giving us a controlled descent there. And look, to be honest, I'll probably just use the brakes on my own, but um, it has the feature there just in case you do need it. So welcome to our camping area. There's like a little creek down there. You can relax and take it easy. Then it's time to leave. So let's do a U-turn and I'll show you how that's gonna work. So coming back out of here, let me show you how this goes down. So I'm not gonna lock the center diff. Let's just see how it goes without this. Just ahead of the driver there, you can see the torque split as we're driving up. So I'll be keen to see whether it does actually adequately split the torque as we drive up. I actually hear a bit of creaking out the back there as well from the seals around the doors. Common issue with other Kia products we've tested. So there it is there. We've lost a bit of traction on one of those wheels. And you can see it's actually sending torque around the car to get us around that. And then it's also managing that process with traction control because you can see it flashing there. So I'm just being gradual on the throttle here. 
And it really is the all-terrains that are doing most of the work here and the traction control as well. There we go, it's a little bit stuck there, but if I just feed it more throttle, traction control is actually doing a decent enough job of getting us up there. Cool, all right, let's try that again. This time I'm gonna lock the center diff and then we'll see how that goes. So to lock the center diff, you just push this button here. It indicates that it's locked up the top there. Now, if you watch that torque split now, it should be doing everything identically in terms of sending torque to the front and rear axle. So it will split it evenly. Turn the parking sensor off. We'll see how much of a difference it actually makes here. So again, same throttle application. Actually feels about the same, to be honest. And I, I get the feeling that it was already doing this anyway when it was in its auto mode. Traction control seems to be doing a decent job though of making sure that uh, we get the traction that we need climbing up here, given it is slightly muddy. Yeah, look, ultimately it's not a huge hill, but it is the type of thing that you would confidently attempt in a car like this because you've got all terrains and it can easily make that climb without, uh, without too many dramas. This is the typical scenario that an owner of this vehicle is probably going to use it in. So yeah, look, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, it, it is obviously, uh, a family vehicle on monocoque chassis. There's only so much you're going to be able to do there in terms of wheel articulation and traction, but um, happy with that result, given that that is the type of scenario that most people are going to be using this for. So the Kia Telluride, look, I honestly wasn't expecting to like this as much as I do. I don't know, it's just like a good family car mixed with very light off-roader. It kind of just gives you the basis that you need without having to jump into one of those big ute-based SUVs. I would love to see this in Australia. Hopefully they come to their senses and figure out how to produce this outside of the States or even from the States in right-hand drive, but we definitely need this in Oz. Let me know what you reckon. Do you think it should come to Oz? Write it down in the comments section. Maybe someone from Kia will have a read of it and go, yep. We're going to bring it to Australia. I'm keen for your feedback. Um, if you are watching this from the States and you own one of these, what is it like to drive? What's it like as a long-term proposition? Keen to also hear that as well. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But until next time, take it easy.